Hello crafty cuties! Today we are going to start a pretty big project. I am making my very own baby junk journal and I'm going to take you through all of the steps, like even the decisions that I haven't made yet. Um, it's going to be quite more of a craft with me than a tutorial. If you want to see a full tutorial where I go through and take you through like the most important parts of creating a journal, I'll have a video or two linked below. I have plenty of tutorials on my channel. Um, but yeah, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I have what I think I need and we're going to start on the base today and then you're just going to see in the coming weeks that when I work on it, I will film whatever it is I'm doing. I do believe that I will probably end up using this paper pad here, um, one of the papers in here to decorate the cover. I don't know if we'll get that far today. Um, and I'll just briefly go over what I'm using. I'm using some recycled book board. This is from a book, um, and I think my friend Lindsay had started to decorate it, and she gave this to me from Vendable Fancies, but I'm actually just going to cover this. I'm not worried about what's on here. I have some um, recycled cardboard, and I have these cut into the size that I want the spine. It's two and a half by nine and a quarter. The book height is nine and a quarter. So I'm gonna glue these together. I have some muslin fabric and let's just go ahead and we'll get started with the spine here. Um, I do like to use like recycled, um, this is like the back of a paper pad and I like using recycled cardboard that's thin and just layering a bunch because I find that it's easy enough to sew through but because of this glue, the glue dries hard, um, it is very durable. And so you could also just use a super thick piece of cardboard and just, you know, cut it down to size. You don't have to do this. But I have so many paper pads and so it just seems to be the easiest way to go. And then I'm not having to buy like cardboard specifically for the spines, but you could just use really whatever you have. Okay. And we're just going to step right in to covering and just making the very basic base of our journal. This is super easy. Um, so I'm using muslin fabric here and I like it because paper can break down and, you know, break apart, especially over years and years of opening and closing it. But fabric's probably not going to. And I used to layer uh, paper first and then I would um, cover it in fabric usually, but I kind of felt like the paper was actually probably a step that I didn't really need to make because you have the fabric that's, you know, protecting the whole thing. And again, it's not going to fall apart. So I like using, and muslin is pretty inexpensive as well. I always start by gluing down the spine and <laughs> it's been a long time since I've made a journal. So this is going to be kind of interesting to see what I do the same, what I do different, what I forget, and yeah, it's just going to be kind of a fun little journey, so hopefully you guys enjoy watching. I'll probably talk during most of the video, but I guess if I'm doing something repetitive, maybe I'll speed it up. Let me go, let me know what you guys prefer. Okay, I'm just going to cover this really good in the glue, and just kind of spread it out here. And then I feel like there's probably going to be like a lot of boring parts. Okay, I like to keep about a quarter of an inch or so in between the spine and the book covers. Just spread that glue on there. And we'll just glue this one up just the same. And then we're basically going to wrap the fabric around. <clears throat> and right now you're going to notice that it's see-through and you're probably you're going to see this probably on the front cover um since i know that i'm going to be covering and decorating the cover i'm not concerned about that at all but if i were just using a light fabric and i just wanted that to be my cover then i would be a little bit more mindful of what cover i was using i'd probably just use like um a lighter cover color or something that doesn't have like a design on it and that's what I would do um and sometimes I'll even like cover I'll cover it in several like layers of fabric just so that it's not see-through but we don't have to worry about that try to get it just about the same as 
that. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and trim the corners here so that these fold nicely and we'll kind of wrap around the book very easily. And then we're just going to go ahead and I just kind of like to put glue all around the edges. And I'll just go ahead and do that all the way around since we will be wrapping the fabric all the way around. This doesn't have to be perfect. I find that this glue is pretty strong, so you don't have to saturate the area too much. And you can add more if you need. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fold the bigger sides up first, although I don't really think it makes a difference. And I definitely have extra fabric, like I didn't need all that excess, but it's not a big deal. And then sometimes I like to add a little extra in these corners, just so it will stay. I'm going to add book corners, but... So I'm not going to fuss with this and get it perfect because it's going to be covered up. I do want to make sure that stays down. All right, there we go. Okay, so before I even fold this up, I'm going to go ahead and cover the inside as well. And I'm just going to use another piece of muslin. It's a little bit smaller. It's not going to wrap around. But um, if you see, this muslin has like some fuzzy tops. I'm actually going to leave that because I liked the texture and I'm going to have that at the top. But I'm also going to use a little bit of cheesecloth. Um, this isn't exactly the right cheesecloth. It's super like stringy, but it, it's okay. I'm going to put this at the bottom and a lot of times I'll put it at the top and bottom just to kind of like mimic an old book. But I'm not going to do that for the top since the top of this fabric is kind of fuzzy. And so now I'm just going to cover all of this in glue so that we can cover the inside. Now you can cover the inside with paper, but if you do that, I personally don't like using like one big piece of paper all the way across because it can very easily crack in the middles. And so I find that it's just so much easier to use fabric because it's flexible, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover this all in glue. All right, I covered it all in glue. So I might try to cut out some parts where it's just super boring because I don't know. I'll try to show you guys most every step, but I do want you to be able to see like pretty important parts, I guess. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then I'm going to go and crease the insides a little bit just to make sure that I'm giving this fabric enough slack. And I'm not worried about this being perfect. I don't even think I put enough glue to be honest. But I'm not worried about it being perfect right now because it's all going to get covered. Um, with different things as we go along. I do not know where any of my tools are, by the way. So you know what, I should have actually put, I forgot about this step, I'm gonna put extra glue down in these creases. That is right. See, this is gonna be kind of a learning experience for me because <laughs> I totally forget some of the things. There we go. You really want that to be able to stick together with the outside fabric, or at least I always find that that's the best way to kind of get everything to mold together really well. So we're going to do that. And we're improvising with using this, the end of this paintbrush. Now we should be able to fold and get a pretty nice tight fold here. And then we can see what's going on with the outside. So now we have this all together. And remember, you could have created this same idea by using like a cardboard or board from like, um, a cracker box or something like that. But now I do like to go ahead and just kind of crease the outside just to add those uh, little divots. And you can do it like this as well. So now it's a good idea to let this dry for just a little bit before moving on because we don't want things to get too wrinkly. So I am going to set this aside and then we can move on to the next step. All right, it's actually a day later because right after I filmed the last clip, my son's school called and Alistair was throwing up at school. So I ended up getting him and bringing him home and then, you know, took care of him all day. And luckily he's feeling better today, but not able to 
go to school. Um, anyway, so let's get back into it. I'm going to try to remember where I left off. I am working on some of the decorations for the cover, and I did go ahead and grab some hardware, which I'll just kind of go over as we get to it. Um, yeah, I don't really have a plan, but I grabbed a few things, and I think I'm actually going to go in a different direction than what I had first pictured. So I found this journaling card, and this is from Prima, and it's called Heaven Scent. And it's in a little pack like this that has a bunch of journaling cards. And so at first I was just going to use this print. I think it's so cute. But I like layering things way too much. And with these kind of prints, you have to get it like just right to get that perfect, you know, picture. So I thought, why don't I stick to the layering that I love? And I really like this print here. So we're going to cut this down, cover the front and back. And then I'll go ahead and do some layering with... Um, this and I'm thinking perhaps I will put this down which might be a little bit different um, and then I can put baby's name here when we know um, I also grabbed some buttons I was thinking buttons would maybe be cute um, if I don't use this so anyways you know I kind of think as I go so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and just cut this down I want this to be almost the same size as the cover here um, just a little bit smaller. Whoops. So I'm just measuring like quick and easy like this because you know what? I don't have a ruler next to me, but that's okay. Okay, and so I got this new trimmer, you guys. Look, I'll bring it over. And I don't really have a flat surface. It's huge. But I got this from Amazon and it was only like 20 bucks. I will try to remember to link it down below. I've only got to use it a few times, so I can't say for sure, you know, how much I love it, or I guess I can't tell you like a full review, but the times I've used it, I really like it. It's super sturdy. It's nice, and it, the blade seems really sharp. It also had really good reviews, so I'm excited just because it's big, and I really wanted a big um, paper trimmer. So anyways, let's see, make sure... Okay, and I'm just using my scissors here to mark where I need to cut, and then I'll go ahead and cut the other side just the same. So, we're going to go like that, and boom. Okay, I'm going to make sure again. So I'm going to go ahead and off camera, I'm just going to cut the same size um, out of this scrap for the back. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I have them cut down, but guess what? I set this on top of the book and gosh, I really like this print because I feel like it gives such a vintage vibe and I really want that. <laughs> I'm deciding what to do. So gosh, I think I'm just going to go with my first choice here and do this, but maybe I'll try to add some details with some buttons like that. I could add lace too, but I'm not sure that I'm going to add lace right now. I can always add that later. I probably will want to add lace. Oh, I do want to add lace. What am I thinking? All right, we're going to scratch the lace idea because I would prefer to sew the lace on and I don't have my sewing machine out. So even though this is going to be, you know, the journal that is going to be for my baby and be something that I have forever. I think that I'm going to go ahead and skip that little detail, the lace. I can add lace with a hot glue gun if I want afterwards. So for right now, I'm just going to spare you guys once again from a little detail. And I'm just taking my ink here and I'm going to ink up the edges of both the front and back. And then we will get back to um, decorating. I think this first video is getting kind of long. So let me know if that's all right with you guys and I'll be right back. I am now taking the same ink. I wish I had my darker brown right now, but I don't know where a lot of my craft supplies are because I'm very not organized right now. Anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and ink the edges up of this book as well. I don't know if the edges will be exposed, but just in case they are, I think that um, it's easier to do this step now than it will be later, um, especially since the red's peeking through a little bit right here, and I don't think that's going to be a problem. I might even add lace there to hide that if I need. But um, yeah, if I had my darker brown, it would be a lot better because this is kind of a weird color, but that's okay. And I'm using like a sponge that had teal on it once, but you guys might know by now that I'm not a perfectionist, so we just go in with what we got. 
Okay, before we glue these down, you do want to make sure that you don't need to add any, uh, you know, de uh, details or things that need to be sewn in or use brads. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I think, I think I'm going to add this right here. So I'm going to look through and find some scrap paper really fast, hopefully. So I'm going to use just a little piece of this vintage um, paper here and I'm just going to, because I don't really want this to be the background, I want kind of a blank canvas. So I'm thinking that this, I like this a lot. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of cut out this for the background of my little nameplate here. I'll perfect that in a moment. Just kind of cut it down to be the size that I need it to be. Doesn't really have to be perfect, but um, okay, so let's think here for a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna get my glue. So what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of glue around the back of this to add my backing first, just so I can have that kind of placed where I need it. And let's see, just make sure that's okay. You know what, I think I'm gonna turn that around. So yeah, it's important to do this first. Okay, trim anything that you need. And then we'll go ahead and make our placement on here. And I am going to use brads, but I'm also going to use glue. So I'll just kind of see where I think it's gonna look good. You guys, I'm not looking for like the perfect middle or anything like that. This glue is just to kind of help it stay in place, but we will have brads as well. And then I like to kind of place it on here so that I can kind of visualize what that's gonna look like. Okay, I like that. I think that these um, Tim Holtz nameplates really make journal covers look extra pretty. Okay, so then you can use extra long brads and have them go through the, f the complete book, um, but I'm not going to do that just because I don't want to take the time. I have a needle here. I'm just going to poke a hole here and there. And again, I'm going to put a little dot of glue. Sorry, I can bring you guys in a little bit. Just to help everything stay in place. And I find that this glue works really great for hardware and stuff um, of that sort. Okay, we're going to pop that one in. And then one over here. And then just do a second look and make sure it's as straight as you want it to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these breads, prongs down. And it is important to make sure that you add any types of things that have brads to your cover before you cover the inside. Okay, I'm feeling like that might be a little crooked. I wish you guys could tell me. I think it might be, but I think it's close enough since I'm questioning it. Now I'm debating on adding a couple buttons down here, but I don't know if it's gonna be too much, just because we have this up here. So I'll place them there and see. I love adding buttons, I do, I do. But, oops, sorry, I'll zoom you guys back out. So I was debating on something like this, but it might be a little too much. Maybe just two, maybe. See, I don't want to add too much just pink because I don't know. We don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Hmm. I'm indecisive right now. All right. I think I'm going to not do the buttons. I think this is enough on its own. Now, also um, figure out if you want to add what kind of closure. So if you need to punch a hole here, you can do that now. I'm going to add lace, which I'll um, have, be putting on the inside. So I don't need to worry about that. But now I'm just going to go ahead and glue this on. I was thinking about layering like another piece of paper underneath, but I honestly like it how it is. I think the paper speaks for itself. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this on and the back cover will just be the plain scrap paper. And then we'll figure out what I'm going to do with the spine as well. And this paper is pretty thick, so I definitely don't need to worry about wrinkling with this glue and this paper. I know that some thin papers, you have to be pretty careful, and I would use maybe a paintbrush or something for that. Now I'm just gluing on the back cover here, just making sure that everything's really smooth. You do want to, you know, pay extra 
attention to your covers and make sure that everything is glued down nicely. So um, now I'm thinking of what I want to do next. There's several different ways depending on what I'm going to do. Like I could add book corners if I wanted and I probably will at some point, but I kind of want to get a plan in my head of what's going to be on the inside cover. Um, I'll probably use this for like a pocket or something like that when we get there. And I want to figure out what I want to do to the spine. I could keep it like this. It'll look pretty cute once we have that down and have a little tassel. I'm actually thinking of adding some scrapbook paper to line the spine here. And I don't usually do that. I usually leave it all fabric, but I'm feeling like it's going to look cute on here. So I'm just going to try it out. I know it's, it's no fun to cut your paper up when you're not certain of something, but I mean, you buy the paper to use, right? All right, I inked up the edges and I added glue. So now we're just gonna position this right in the middle. I think I'm happy that I did that. It's just not something I usually do, but I think it looks cute. And I really like to put lots of thought into the spine since that's kind of what shows when it's on your bookshelf. All right. There we go. Now we're going to add the ring fastener on the spine because I know I want to use that so that we can add a tassel later. I just want to make sure that everything is going to stick down perfectly. I'm actually using a really big ring fastener that I got from, um, I can't remember, but I got it from my junk trunk kits and um, it's bigger than the Tim Holtz one, but I, I think it's pretty cool. So I'm actually going to use it for the first time here. So we're going to find the middle. Now I want to add the ring fastener now before we cover the inside because I'd like to cover those prongs. So I took a piece of paper here that is the width of my spine and I just folded it in half. It's just a really quick and easy way to find the center. I want to kind of place this and just make sure I know I want it to be right about there. And I'm going to use my alligator. Is that what it's called? Crocodile. Alligator. That's funny. I think someone said that recently and the yeah, anyways. Crocodile. We're going to go ahead and just punch a hole and hope that it's centered. <laughs> Add a little dab of glue here, as always, and then we're going to take and put the prongs together and just put this right in here. These prongs are super strong actually compared to like the Tim Holtz ones, but there we go. Perfect. I'm excited. Okay. Go ahead and spread those out and let's see. Yeah, I like that a lot. Sorry guys. Out of frame. Okay, so so I know that this first episode is pretty long, so we're gonna stop there. Um, I know we didn't complete the entire base. We still have the inside, but I will do the inside on the next um, episode so that I can spend lots of time showing you how I like to decorate and things like that. And please give me feedback on this first um, series, or I keep calling it episode, whatever it is, this first video in the series so that I can know, is this too long? Is it too much talking? Because I can gladly speed through things and, you know, not film when I'm doing repetitive things. I would love to know, or if you like it to hear me talk through everything, um, then please tell me that as well. I hope that you guys are enjoying the first video in this series. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.